folks, welcome to another edition of Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. And on today's show, for the first time ever, we have Michael Cole. Michael is the newest uh, member of the Pierce Arrow show, and then was in AO, if you remember, they were in Branson here for several years, so I'm really excited to have him on the show today. Now, when the show launches, it's about December 22nd, and so if it launches December 22nd, I want to just say happy birthday to my mother, even though I know she probably won't be watching this. So someone else, if you see it, tell her that I said happy birthday to her. But here's the deal. Christmas is around the corner, and this is um, such a special holiday. And one of the things that I love about Branson, Missouri, is we celebrate the real meaning of Christmas, and that is the birth of Jesus Christ. And you can see that in our culture. You can see that in our history. Um, if you come to Branson, we have one of the, you know, the longest running Christmas parades, uh, adoration parade. They light up the adoration scene above downtown, and they've been doing that for over, what, 70 years. Um, we have, of course, Christmas shows that celebrate the real meaning of Christmas over at the Sight and Sound Theater, the miracle of Christmas. And so with all the hustle and bustle, with all the parties that happen and just gift giving, do not forget the real meaning of Christmas and why it is so important because God sent his son, Jesus Christ, uh, which he then ultimately died for our sins. That's good news. And so maybe you're out there having a tough day, but just remember the good news of Christmas and what it really means to us. So we're going to be back in just a second with Michael Cole. The Christmas season is a perfect time for family traditions. Branson's Lights of Joy, Branson's all LED Christmas display drive through is a great way to create those lasting Christmas memories. Discover over 250 Christmas displays in an amazing drive through tunnel with state-of-the-art lighting. Branson's Lights of Joy is located just north of Sight and Sound Theater on Expressway Lane. Open nightly through January 2nd. Santa loves these lights and will be there on select nights. Visit lightsofjoydrivethrough.com for more info and to book online. Hey folks, welcome to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. And on today's show, I have the one and only Michael Cole. Welcome to the show. I'm very excited to be here. So you, you've got a great history as far as your family and entertainment and of course you're you're the newest member of Pierce Arrow and we're going to talk more about that but we want to we want to go way back okay and um, so talk about how you got into this entertainment business what led to that kind of just talk about your journey uh, well I'm very blessed to be here Chris first off and uh, uh, as far as my journey as an entertainer it's started off real young so um, uh, I grew up singing in the church um, and just just doing concert choir and stuff like that. But then in 2005, um, my mother was actually hit head on by a drunk mm. driver. Um, and due to that accident, um, my father gathered us all around, myself, my brother, and my sister, and, and asked us all to just to sing to her to try to get her to respond. And uh, out of that tragedy, um, we we're very blessed to say that we still have our mother, but we were able to build something more. Um, we started singing not only to our mother, but also uh, from hospital room to hospital room, nursing home to nursing home, uh, eventually churches and larger events, until in 2009, we were on America's Got Talent, where we placed fifth out of over 100,000 contestants. Okay, so. folks, he, he was pretty humble in how he just said that, but they placed fifth in the entire country <laughs> on America's Got Talent. And of course, if you watch TV, you know that's a huge show. And so, th did that change things for you? Oh, very much so. Very much so. It, it completely changed the trajectory of our of our lives. Um, we went from um, basically just being a, a local singing group and and going to small events and stuff like that. To next thing you know, we're singing at um, Madison Square Garden. We're traveling overseas. We're um, we uh, ended up leading worship down in Holy Land down in Orlando. Um, so there's there's a lot of different opportunities that came our way uh, due to America's Got Talent, including um, a few months after uh, being able to move down to Branson, and we started our own show after a couple years. 
Yeah, and so it was called AO. Yes. And what does AO stand for? Well, AO in Yoruba, which is the language mainly spoken in West Africa, means joy. So we're just trying to spread as much joy as possible. And we did that by singing pop, jazz, soul, gospel, um, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a live band behind us, and, and we were very blessed to have that, uh, that chapter of our lives. Yeah. Now, how old were you when you started doing that? Uh, I'd say I was probably about 19. And you were the oldest? Yes. Okay, so folks, here, here's the thing. He was 19. His siblings were younger, and so they had a show. You guys were probably some of the youngest entertainers to have their own show in Branson. Yes, sir. And uh, I remember going to one of their shows, and I, if I remember correctly, I heard them sing a Toby Mac song, and I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> holy cow. Now, if you've ever watched the show very much, you know that I'm a Toby Mac fan, and you, if you don't know who Toby Mac is, go Google it. But, um, like, like it was just, to me, it was like a breath of fresh air because you guys were doing stuff that nobody else was doing in Branson. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I guess you can say that just due to our background, um, we brought something new to Branson. Mm -hmm. um, we grew up singing gospel music, but we also had, uh, we, growing up in mid-state New York, uh, we had a lot of different influences that uh, people down here didn't have um, the opportunity to listen to. So uh, everything from, uh, of, of course, not only singing in church, but also growing up uh, with some friends that had a jazz club. Uh, so we spent some time there, and then uh, uh, we were always going to uh, contemporary gospel concerts and stuff like that. So uh, you, you never know what type of music we were going to bring into the yeah. into the fold. Yeah. So how many? How long did you have a show here in Branson? Um, I believe we had. Uh, I want to say it was about six six years. Six years, and then you. you I, re, I remember specifically you're over at the Hughes Brothers Theater, mm -hmm. but weren't, did you go anywhere else during that time frame? Well, we had a, a few years at the Hughes Brothers Theater. Then we went to the Starlight for two years before it became Beyond the Lens, uh, and then from there we uh, went to Andy Williams Theater, and we spent our last couple years there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now your sister, I know, is doing the Christmas show over mm -hmm. there this year, and. I always said that Nadia, to me, was like the next Whitney Houston. I mean, she just had amazing voice. I mean, they're all so talented. Um, so, you know, I think, um, you know, you've been in this role not very long, but I, I heard about it when it was like fir first happening. Like you weren't even at Pierce Arrow yet. <laughs> and so kind of how did that all how did that all happen for you to get the, the role well, over at Pierce um, Arrow? Let's just say uh, after we stopped doing our shows, um, uh, I kind of took a step back from the entertainment industry, um, and I wanted to focus on my family for, for a few years. Because you got married. Yeah, I got married. Yeah. Um, now me and my wife have two kids. Oh, my gosh. So uh, we're, we're, very busy. Excited, we're very excited about <laughs> yeah. our family. And, and uh, uh, after a couple years of, of focusing on the family, um, there was a member of Pierce Arrow that stepped away and started doing his own things. Um, and then uh, Chad Rudin, um, mm -hmm. the lead singer over at Pierce Arrow, contacted me and, and was just like, hey, uh, we have this opening. Would you be interested in, in joining the group? And I was just like, well, um, I'm, I'm kind of retired. <laughs> <laughs> and, retired. Yeah, and he's just like, well, we may have to pull you out of retirement. So uh, uh, I talked to them and uh, ended up coming over and auditioning. And um, after singing a few songs with, with Dan and the guys, uh, it was just a great fit. Okay. Yeah. And so how long, when did, do you have like an official start date or when did, do you know when you started? Um, I started on September 27th of okay. this year. Okay. So folks, if you haven't been to Pierce Arrow lately, you haven't seen Michael Cole in the show, so you've got to come yeah. see them. Now, you guys, but like, as AO, you guys were also trying to work with like some top producers and yes. trying to get a record deal. Did mm -hmm. whatever happened with with that? Well. Um Let's just say that we, we were very blessed and fortunate um, over the years that we were doing our show to produce many different albums. We, okay. had, uh, we had five different albums that we produced. Um, and then um, we were working with some, with some big name artists. Uh, our manager at the time was really focused on not only having everything in Branson, but also he wanted to uh, touch base and try to see if we can uh, branch out. Um, and we still have some connections with some of those producers, but just due to um, 
I guess you could say the the last few projects that we tried to work on, um, we didn't really feel like the producers that we had were a great fit for the family. Gotcha. Um, and gotcha. we we didn't really have. Um, we weren't all going in the same direction. Mm. So, and that, ha that sometimes happens in exactly. the music industry. Exactly. You know. So. Yeah. And then on top of that, with the with our group name, yeah, the show was named uh, Ao, but our group name and what we were known as on America's Got Talent was the Voices of Glory. So with that being the case, we had a interesting dichotomy of, mm. of trying to decide: uh, Are we going to go full gospel? Or are we going to be going more contemporary, or are we going yeah. to um, try to, to shed a light um, in um, in secular music? So there was a, a various different um, conversations that we had as a family and as a group yeah. to try to see where we were going to go. Yeah, that's a good place to stop, folks. We'll be right back with more with Michael Cole. Hang tight. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. We're here with Michael Cole, the newest member of Pierce Arrow. So, let's talk about Pierce Arrow. Oh, definitely. Pierce Arrow's been in Branson for literally decades, mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a rich history there. Very much um, so. And so, if someone's never seen the show, there's actually more than one show. So, mm -hmm. talk about both of the shows over at the Pierce Arrow Theater. Well, we have, like you said, we have two shows. Uh, we have the Decade Show, and then we also have our Country Show. Uh, which um, the decade show will span over the the course of the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, and just give you some of those power-packed hits that that everybody loves. Um, and then the country show um, is just a a wide variety of country uh, great songs that uh, that everybody knows and loves. Um, in fact, uh, growing up in Midstate, New York, um, it, it wasn't necessarily something that. Um, I was accustomed to as an artist, um, but um, stepping into the role at Pierce Arrow, it's definitely stretching me as an artist yes. and uh, showing me a, a new side of me, a new side of myself and a new side of my artistry that uh, I wasn't um, wasn't ready to dive into prior to now. So I'm, yeah. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. So it, well, it's always good to stretch a little bit, right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> you don't the, grow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, we were interviewing uh, Lee Hendricks a couple weeks ago, and mm -hmm. he, he kept getting into roles that kind of he's like hadn't anticipated, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes that happens. Um, besides the music, you also have comedy. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, we have uh, 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 James Sibley, who uh, is a phenomenal comedian. Um, in fact, he actually used to write for SNL right. um, uh, back in the day, and, and he's uh, an award-winning comedian, one comedian of the year. Um, and honestly, every time he gets on the stage, he has me rolling every time. Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter if I've heard the joke one time or a hundred times, he, he knows how to, how to deliver it in a way that uh, changes your perspective on it. And, yeah. it, and it's really refreshing. So there's typically four of you mm -hmm. on stage, and so what? Like, talk about what role does everybody play, okay. kind of on stage? Um, well, we have uh, Dan Britton, who is the owner and producer. Um, he's actually the one that uh, really put Pierce Arrow together, and he's mm -hmm. been holding Pierce Arrow together over the past uh, few decades. Um, so we're very blessed to have him, and he's uh, definitely that that father figure kind of pushes uh, everybody to. Now he's the bass singer. It, yes, sir. He's, he's the, the bass singer. I do know that. I yeah. do know that one. Yeah, he's the bass singer, and he actually um, not only is a bass singer, but um, he actually was in the Guinness World Book of Records for the lowest note um, mm -hmm. sang. So um, uh, we're very excited to have him. Uh, besides that, we also have our powerhouse tenor, who's uh, Tony Turner. Uh, been in this town for several years, but he's also been performing uh, as a musical artist since he was six. That's so, a long time. Yeah. So, um, so we're very excited to have him, uh, tremendous voice. And then uh, you have uh, Chad Rudin, who brought me to the show. 
and he is uh, not only our lead singer, he's also a tenor, um, but at the same time, he brings a certain energy to the stage that uh, is like no other. Uh, it's, it's really exciting and refreshing to be able to see that type of energy coming from the stage. Yeah, I, th I think he's got a really good rock voice. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, I saw him, I think it was Forever Young when I first saw mm -hmm. him, it was a show that he was in, and I was like, man, that guy could sing. Yeah. And so. the thing is, he's, uh, he's like I said, he's power packed. So I've, I've um, talked to him about some of his uh, exploits and being able to uh, not only do shows here in Branson, but he's also been on uh, touring companies for musicals and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he has a wide range uh, that he actually brings to the table. Yeah. And then uh, myself, being the new member of the group, I am the baritone You're of the, the group. Baritone. So uh, uh, it's... It's kind of like that spot right between the tenor and the bass, and uh, I just try to fill in where I uh, fit in where I fill in. So, it's do you have a, do you have a where you're you're singing by yourself, or are you always singing with them, or how does that work? Well, we have uh, we definitely have uh, songs that we're all featured on, um, and depending on the show, you'll you'll be able to see me on certain songs, um, everything from uh, Folsom Prison Blues in the country show to. Um, uh, to the best of my love, um, I also do um, what's it called um, "Baby, Please Come Home for Christmas" by the by the Eagles. Uh, I do that one in the in the Decades Christmas Show. Um, so even even with the um, with the Christmas Show being the way it is, we do the Decades Show um, and the Country Show. Even in the Christmas half of the show, it's completely different. Okay. So, but okay. uh, we definitely have songs that we do together, and then we also have songs that we do separate too. Okay, so this time of year, uh, one half is, is one half of the show like regular, and then the other half Christmas. Yes, uh, okay. rather than doing a full Christmas show, um, two hours of Christmas is a lot to sit through, um, even for uh, for me to be able to perform through it. Um, so we're very excited to be able to do the best of what we do throughout okay. the regular season. Um, and then uh, for the first half, and then the second half uh, is nothing but Christmas. Okay. So you get a little bit of both, folks. Of course. And, and some shows in Branson are like that. Some shows are all Christmas, and then I actually went to a show the other night where they interchanged both of them together, and I'd never seen that before where That's it's some Christmas. That's an interesting concept. Normal sh and, and I, it actually worked, and so I was like, "Well, there's another way to do it too." So, yeah. you know, everybody does produces their shows the own, their own way. But anyway, um, they're going to get the best of kind of the first half, and then the second half will be Christmas. And one thing that I find that's interesting about our show um, is that um, when it comes to the Christmas half, we have a segment of our show that is literally all requests. So um, if you have a, uh, uh, a Christmas carol that you absolutely love and you haven't been able to hear it during your time here in Branson, come to our show and request it during the, during the show. And, and uh, we'll literally just sit together almost like we're sitting around a campfire and literally just, that's uh, great. just throw the songs together. Once again, that's an example of the quality of the entertainment and the musicians that they can just do that. Yes. yes. Uh, because you got to know a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a whole little, a whole lot of songs in our repertoire, and uh, some of which we do on a regular basis. Some of which it's just like, mm -hmm. all right, I don't know all the words to this one, but James does, or yeah. or uh, Chad does, or yeah. Tony does, and and yeah. we we literally just try to make it to where the uh, the guests that are coming to our show get a full Christmas experience. Yeah. So, folks, I I just think this is a great story, Michael's story, and his family of. You know, they're basically around their mother when she's in the hospital, literally in a coma. Yes. And they're singing to her, trying to wake her up. And something that was bad, good things came out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, your family, I would say, is a family of faith and has been Very able to so. share the gospel message. And so, you know, if there's something that's bad going on in your life, God can take it and he can use it for good. And this is a perfect example of that. And your story, you guys have a book out, I think, right? Or is it yes. that they can go to Amazon? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if I've got the right title here. Higher Than Me? Yes, sir. Right? Story? Something yes. like that? Um, so you might want to go check it out on Amazon. There's a book there about your family. And so 
just know that God can use bad things and good things can come out of it. And really, it's of changed course. changed y'all's lives. Oh, yes. Uh, it completely changed the trajectory of our life. And, and uh, we're very blessed to be able to have that story um, and not only have the story, but also be able to say that uh, our our family has grown and thrived because of mm. it. Um, our, our mother's still with us, and uh, she actually has come to several of the shows that I've been performing at Pierce Arrow. That's good. Um, um, That's good. And we're very excited to be able to be able to shed that light. Um, and like you were saying, um, it's actually uh, Romans 8:28 that says, "All things go are uh, go for the good of those who love Him and are called by His purpose." And each one of us, no matter who we are, have a purpose that God has mm. called us to. Um, so I don't I don't care if if you've looked at. Um, being in entertainment before, or if your purpose is to be able to uh, to be able to be a, a shining light in in your job setting, um, each one of us have a purpose. There we go, folks. Those are great words to end on. Go see Michael Cole. Go see him over at the Pierce Arrow Theater. Uh, we're glad you're back, entertaining in Branson. Mm -hmm. And uh, folks, we'll be back in just a minute to wrap the show up. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to the show. We're wrapping the show up today. We want to definitely thank Michael for coming out. Uh, be sure to go see them, him over at the Pierce Arrow Theater. They do Pierce Arrow Country or Pierce Arrow Decades. And those shows this year will be going through December 29th or December 30th, uh, depending on the show at 8 p.m. So you can still see him this year. Um, next week's show we are going will be our last show of the year. Uh, we're going to have Faith Bavo, I hope I got that last name right, from Wonderworks. And so every blue moon, I do an attraction. And so we're going to talk to her about Wonderworks. If you haven't been to Wonderworks, it's a huge building out on uh, 76 Country Music Boulevard. Looks like it's upside down. Anyway, we'll be talking to her. The other thing is you still have time to plan for New Year's Eve. And if you haven't done that yet, I would highly encourage you to book your shows because those shows sell out on New Year's Eve, at least the last several years, a lot of them have sold out. Um, you have shows over at the Americana Theater, uh, Anthems of Rock, at the Clay Cooper Theater with Clay Cooper and the Hay Goods, Dolly Parton Stampede, Grand Jubilee, the Hamners, the Hughes Brothers, Reza, Nashville Roadhouse Live, Texas Tenors. There's a lot of other shows I didn't announce, but those are shows that are happening in the evening. You do want to be sure and check out the exact time of that show. Sometimes they start later and then they go later. It just depends on the show and what they're exactly doing. Here's the deal. 2022 is about over, but you can still come to Branson this year. It's not too late, but maybe you're saying I'm ready to start planning my 2023 trip. You can go to ibranson.com or you can call those folks at 877-ENTERTAIN and they can help plan your entire Branson vacation. Folks, if you haven't liked us yet on Facebook, go and do that. Facebook.com forward slash Play Branson. Or you can also go to our website, playbranson.com. Uh, we're also on, I believe, Instagram. Uh, so check us out there, YouTube as well. Uh, like us in those places. That way you'll get notifications of our next episodes um, and so we'll be back next week with one more episode in the season for Play Branson. See you soon.